the highest possible. Who wants to just slide through and just be like, you know what? I know I'm supposed to do this much, but I just want to get through. I don't really care. The less I do, the better. That's you? <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay, so there are people that definitely, you know, that's like, I'm just going to do the bare minimum. And that's those regulations that are put out there is to tell you what the bare minimum is. So 30 minutes a day is actually just the bare minimum. Now, how many of you guys know people who don't even do that? Yeah, like some of our parents, right? Sometimes I don't, actually. So think about, okay, so you have the bare minimum. What would you say is the optimal amount of exercise? So you got minimum, which is 30 minutes a day of getting out of breath. What do you guys think the best amount, the optimal amount is? About two hours. About two hours, that's good. What do you think? An hour. About an hour. Anybody else? You guys all agree one to two hours is probably like the best? What? No. Exercise? Exercise, yeah. Getting out. What do you think? About six hours, what do you think? Seven. Okay, seven hours. So how many hours are you guys awake in a day? How many hours are you guys awake in a day? You're awake 24 hours? So it's 24 hours in a day, you sleep about 8 to 10, right? So you got about 14 hours of daytime, right? So of those 14 hours, how many of them should be active? You guys already said seven, you got eight. How many know how much exercise Olympic athletes do a day? Oh, uh, about probably about six hours. Six, sixteen? A day? Okay. How many do you think? No, 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 no. A day. Probably about five to six hours. Five to six hours. Nine hours. You think about nine hours? I'm just thinking. Okay. The basic, basic level that a lot of Olympic athletes do is at least four hours a day. There are children that are out there right now that are about six, seven years old who, before they go to bed, they actually do their homework when they get home from school, and they spend four hours training for any particular sport that they do. Four hours. How many of you guys are getting at least four hours of exercise every day? Getting out of breath. Wow. Half. So most sports you guys are doing, if you guys, how many of you guys are in sports or after school activities? Oh, I didn't track. Track is it. That's yeah. That's a sport. Pretty good. So there's some of us that, that probably aren't getting that in. Okay. So we already know that oxygen is huge. Disease cannot grow in oxygen-rich blood, right? We already talked about the pond scum. Disease can't even. Disease grows in that pond scum. And if we don't got pond scum because we're exercising and we're pumping it through, you're good now. This is something that probably wasn't really important to me until I watched some family members of mine die of cancer. Does anybody know or have had anybody in their family who is overweight? Anybody in your family overweight? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like obese or <laughs> Just overweight. Overweight. Little, like, could lose a few pounds. Okay. How many people know someone in their family that has had cancer? Oh, like pretty much anybody? Any cancer. No, I haven't. Okay, a lot of you guys. I don't know. Okay, how about how about diabetes? Does anybody know of anybody that's had diabetes? Yeah, everyone in this area has raised their hands. You guys know someone who has diabetes? Oh yeah. Someone in the classroom has it. Oh. Your type type one. Do you have the injections that you get? Yeah, it's two forty. No, my blood sugar. Wow. How many of you have you guys ever done your blood sugar? Tested your blood sugar? Oh, yeah. You want to get a hundred? So what did you do with your blood? You had your finger pricked. Yeah. Oh yeah. Is that fun? I like I'm sad. Yeah, I don't like needles. I'm scared. Too. Yeah, I am too. It scares me. Too. It's kind of fun. You get cold. It's fun. It is actually. You see when you get your number, you get your reading, and you get to see what your blood sugar is. How many people know? Who else wants to be my best friend up here? You want a best friend up here? Yeah, you want to come on up. You can bring a chair. Bring a chair, unless you want to sit up in your style like Mari. Okay, so let's see. 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 let us see huge to me that I thought, this is my fate. It's genetic, it's in my system, I'm going to have cancer, and that's just my fate. How many people believe that? That their family has diabetes, or they're overweight, or they have heart disease, you know, heart attacks, or, and 
they think that, you know what, it's genetic, that's what's going to happen, I'm going to have that, and that's just how I'm going to die. How many people think that? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I did the same thing. So for the longest time when I was in school, they said, if your family has it, you're going to have it too. And that's probably the way that you're going to die. And that freaked me out. I mean, how would you like it? Think about it. Like, knowing your fate. Like, I'm going to die. Like, this is it. I'm going to have cancer. Has anybody watched people that are that are losing their life and they're dying? Yes. Have you seen that? Yeah. How... How sad is that? And how sad is that to think that's going to be me? So I, when I was in my early 20s and I started noticing my family members were dying at a young age of diseases. Yeah. Maybe HIV? HIV, yeah, that, that's another thing. So do you guys think that you're going to like grow old and get HIV? And that's just your fate? You know how you take care of yourself? Uh-huh. Oh. <laughs> Absolutely, that's exactly what I'm getting to. So did you guys know that actually only 10% of, of, of what's going on, of those disease, is really kind of in your gene pool? But actually 90% of your health is affected by the choices that you make every day. Whether you choose to get the sunlight every day, whether you choose to drink enough water. How many knows how much water we should even be drinking? Who knows then right them out? I'm going to pick someone new. She's new. I'm going to pick you. Okay. How much water? Eight glasses of water. Anybody have a different number? Half a gallon a day. Half a gallon a day. Three cups. Three cups. A gallon. About seven cups. Okay. Yeah. Isn't this one like eight to seven? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to tell you something that's never, that, so you're never going to wonder how much water is appropriate for me because actually it's based on how much you weigh, where you live, if, the, if it's warm, the way that you eat, if you eat a lot of water rich foods like fruits and vegetables, or if you're eating more dense foods like breads and pastas. So it really varies. So it's kind of confusing like, all right, well, this person, if they exercise and they eat really good, they don't need, you know, they need this amount of water where I need this. And it's really kind of confusing. And for a long time, you used to go, I don't really know how much water I'm supposed to drink because it's summertime and I'm exercising, so I know my needs are higher. But there's a really gross way to know if you're drinking enough water. <laughs> and I think you guys know where I'm going. Oh. Yeah, I can tell that the face is getting red right now. <laughs> so, yeah, it's totally gross. I mean, but here's the deal. If you guys go to the bathroom, you're going number one. Look in the toilet. If the water is not clear, and that's already diluted, because look, there's like a gallon of water sitting in the bottom of that already. So if you can actually see any color, that means you're dehydrated. You know that when you go to the bathroom and it is clear, you're drinking enough water. And the goal is like, yeah, I can drink a whole bunch of water in the morning and then not drink any more, and then by night, it's not gonna be clear anymore. So the goal is to keep it all throughout the day. Clear. Now I know, and I'm sure you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. So when you guys are thinking about how much exercise, or I mean, how much water to drink in a day, that is how you know, because everybody's different. You might do two hours of exercise a day, you might not do any, and you might be in the hot sun, and you might live up in the mountains where it's freezing cold. You might eat vegetables all day, you might eat bread all day. I don't really know, but the way you can monitor: Am I getting enough water in my body? Is my fish tank of my body clean, well, that's going to tell you right there, because that's the pond scum that is coming out of your body. If you can re remember that analogy that I had, cleaning out your blood, that scum, that's in your urine. So if your urine is not clear, I know it's such a, such a silly little thing to talk about, but my kids are your, I actually have two, two kids, and they're your guys' age, and we have these discussions all the time. All right, so now we're on to, everybody's clear on how much sunlight we should get a day, right? You guys get that? All right, so how, how much? What was that number? 30 minutes. At least 30 minutes. At least, that's the minimum. So remember we talked about minimal or bare minimum or recommended minimum? And then we have optimal, right? Optimal is pretty much every day, all day, as much as you can. If you can build that up, the more sunlight you get, the better. The more oxygen and sweating you do, the better. How many people take a shower every day? 